Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, setting up social media login or OAuth with MVC applications in uh, Visual Studio uh, using ASP.NET. Um, to get started, we have to create a new project. This video is going to be about setting up that project and getting it ready to, uh, to accept our social media logins. I'll do a little bit of, ex of explanation about the process uh, and then our following videos will be about setting up applications for individual social media networks. So let's get started. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna call this application Social Media Reader. Gotta spell it right, there we are. Uh, we're going to select all the defaults. We're not worried about application insights at this point. From here, we're simply going to select uh, MVC template. Uh, all the defaults here are fine. We're going to be using individual user accounts, and we are not posting to the cloud. Okay, we're all ready to go. Now there's a few updates that we have to do to, before we get started. I like to do these updates right away at the beginning so that uh, if we ever have to update anything uh, over the course of the project, um, we don't stand a chance of making any big mistakes. So we're gonna go into new Git. And again, that was by right click on the project <clears throat> and then uh, manage new Git packages, okay? That will bring up this um, dialog box. Uh, you can choose Browse, Installed, and in this case, we're doing updates. There are currently 10 updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and update and uh, get that started. All right, we'll select Accept on that. And we'll just wait for the process to finish. Okay. We're at the end of this process here. Now all we have to do is restart. All right, so now that we've restarted, all of our package should be updated. We have one more package to update, and um, that one will give us some extra providers for our OAuth application. So. We do this by doing a install package in our package manager console. If you don't see the package manager console, you can go to view and then other windows and then click on package manager console. You should, uh, you should see it come up just like that. Okay. Now we're going to do, we're going to type owin security dot providers as our install package. So we'll get started with that. <clears throat> and you'll notice it's going to install quite a few different providers. Uh, as uh, What you'll see later on is that we, out of the box, we have uh, application availability for um, Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook, and Google. Uh, you will see that we'll have a whole bunch of other ones added here. If you're watching the list go through, you're seeing uh, we've got uh, uh, let's see, Discord, Do You Buzz, lots of them. There's Dropbox there, lots of them that we, you know, you may not even be aware of. Flickr, Foursquare. So if you decide that you want to integrate with, uh, with any of these social media providers, the functionality will be fully available for you right now. Okay, we're fully up to date. The next thing I'm going to show you is uh, a couple of the files that we're going to be working with, <clears throat> and that will be the end of our video. We're going to start our, in our next one by actually setting up apps in some of our face, some, some of our uh, favorite social media sites, and we're going to get started with Facebook. However, uh, there are a couple of files you're going to need to get familiar with. In the app underscore start folder, we're going to go into the start dot off file or startup.auth file. Um, in this file, you're going to see a few things that are pre-configured. 
Uh, we don't have to think about them too much at this point. Uh, they're out of the box. We have all the features that we actually need to get started for most things. Um, at the bottom of the file, you're going to see the four social media networks uh, that I talked about. Uh, we have Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook, Google Authentication. Now, <clears throat> at, this, at this point right here, we have Facebook Authentication. And what you're going to be doing, once you actually have an app set up, you're going to be commenting this out. All right, That will be essentially how you make that work. Okay. And I'm going to be getting into that in a moment uh, when we start talking about setting up applications. The next part, we're going to be looking into the account controller. There's a few th parts of the account controller that we'll, we'll get used to as well. First of all, we have the external login. This is the route that gets passed uh, from any provider unless we provide something different. Um, it will essentially interpret the, the callback from the provider once we accept the, that, a, uh, that a login is, uh, is, um, is viable uh, or secure or allowed, if whatever ch choice of words you choose. Uh, it then goes back and uh, converts that login to account controller and then we look for external login callback. So if we go look for external login callback, it's right here, that accepts a return URL as the parameter. And essentially that return URL is, is used for uh, once it is finished processing this, it uh, kicks back to the, uh, to the URL if it's successful, it's going to use that URL, kicks back to wherever it came from, and uh, away it goes. All right. Now, there's a few things that have to be done as well. Um, we'll explain here. Uh, this call here, oops, this call grabs the uh, login information um, based on the authentication manager credentials. Uh, once we have the login information, we can... Uh, do an external sign-in uh, from whatever information comes back. In other words, if we uh, need to, uh, if, if, we, if we have an account created already, it just logs in, just goes right in and just, and just goes ahead. Um, <clears throat> if the account is locked out, then it returns to lockout. If it requires ver verification, in other words, it uh, needs to send a code, then it will send a code such as uh, something to a text message. The next one is uh, the default section, which basically says, uh, hey, I need you to put in some information like your email, uh, first, last name, perhaps, uh, a few other things like that. Okay, So from that point, we um, can look at what does the external login confirmation look like. And essentially, it's just a view. Uh, the view gets prepared. Uh, by sending the model in, and that model comes from up here. It only sends in email, okay? Comes over here, we move down. Now, the only reason I'm not, uh, not getting finicky about whether lines are cut off is because it's the template program. There's nothing different about this template that you would have in, at this version of uh, Visual Studio. <coughs> So um, the next stage, double checks to see that the model is valid. It then gets the external login information again, just like we did before, and then uh, fills in the default information for an application user. All right, next step is it creates the user. If it was successful at creating the user, then we add the login information to the, to the, uh, to the tables. And I'm going to detail some of those tables in the next sessions as well, so hang tight. Um, once that is succeeded, then we actually perform a full sign-in, and then we redirect to the URL uh, that was in the information before that was passed into the parameters. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. We're going to pick up in the next one where we start talking about 
actually creating applications in uh, social media networks. So hang tight. We'll uh, pick up in a uh, in, uh, short while. Thanks a lot for watching. And remember to like and share. It helps me a lot. Thanks, guys. Take care.